What's going on, Vapor fans? So uh, today I'd like to talk to you guys about the product and uh, uh, the company that I uh, partnered up with and uh, started the uh, pretty much a new product line and our debut item being the uh, Fogwork slider. Now, uh, before we begin, I'd really like to uh, thank all of you who've been supportive the whole time, stayed a subscriber through all of my different endeavors and stuff like that. Uh, it's really you guys out there who, you know, uh, have stuck with me this whole time that, you know, continue to give me strength and courage to continue, you know, stepping up to the plate and taking uh, swings and swinging for the fences, really. Um, you know, uh, different projects that I uh, we, we've done in the past, it wasn't without its planning, it wasn't without its, you know, deep thought, you know, uh, mistakes that have been made and stuff like that, you know, uh, life is a, a bumpy road and, you know, um, I, I wouldn't trade uh, any of it for the world, you know, because... Uh, what we've been through are experiences that uh, I've learned that have been, you know, more than valuable to me. And uh, hopefully, you know, uh, without making mistakes, you, you're just going to have no chance of uh, improving, right? So anyways, with that said, okay, I wanted to go ahead and do a video for you guys uh, talking about the Fogwork slider and also thanking everybody who has participated in the uh, beta program of the Fogwork slider and also uh, to talk a little bit about the uh, the thought process behind it, the creation of things, where we are at at the moment, uh, what ended up happening with with, uh, with um, the slider throughout, you know, um, it's uh, this, this whole adventure, uh, so to speak. And then uh, finally at the end, I'm going to go through um, you know, just a little bit of my intention of how this item was supposed to be set up and built. You know, uh, of course, there's no right or wrong way to build an item, but you guys who have received the uh, Fogworks beta version or who plan to pick up a slider yourself, you know, would have an idea of like what the intention of the creator was. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. All right, so basically, the Fogworks slider was. Um, you know, I, I, I really appreciate everybody who gets it and, and just just gets it, you know, like what we're trying to do and stuff. Um, to me, it strives from the, just the, the idea of like innovation of stuff. Uh, being in this industry for so long and, you know, uh, going to vape events and teaching this stuff and, and doing my own research and everything, um, just seeing things for myself, right? Um, my angle of seeing these things uh especially when it comes to innovation there's pretty much like uh three ways of looking at it right um when it comes to innovation there is true innovation which is just a sheer stroke of genius it changes the way we vape the way we do and it's not just in vaping it's in all sorts of industries and stuff uh Awesome ideas would be like, you know, the, the invention of the smartphone and uh, whatnot. It changes the way we do things completely, you know. Um, people would used to laugh at the, the idea of like, you know, why is your so phone so big? And then there was a time where, you know, phones were getting smaller and smaller. And then the phablet came out and people were just like, it's a phone, it's a tablet, it's a, right? But then now, basically, a lot of people can't really even operate without their phone being a certain screen size. So... Uh, with that being said, uh, there's also innovation where people just kind of um, uh, blindly swing at things. You know what I mean? There's there was, in my opinion, it just wasn't much thought behind it. For example, in vaping, right? It would be things like the uh, the touch screen or the um, uh, Bluetooth devices and stuff like that. You know, for me, it, it was never. Uh, uh, considered super innovative to, that to have like you know um a bluetooth app that syncs up from your phone so that like you know something in your left hand can control something in your right hand why don't i just move my hand over and dial what i need you know and as far as the touchscreen stuff i had uh, up until now I'm, I'm, i mean we haven't even really seen much applications and and stuff that really warrants uh the need for a touchscreen on top of a vaping device right and uh, the, the the next thing is you know the questionable um, battery um, banks that that are being built into a lot of uh, regulated devices out there you know uh, do we even need something like that it's there sure it's added you know you're, you're adding more functions and abilities and, and, and stuff like that but again we come back and then we question you know is this really innovation or is just 
kind of sort of just, you know, taking shots into the dark and seeing what sticks, right? Um, the last thing that I want to talk about regarding innovation is basically uh, something called natural progression, okay? Natural progression means that, like, if the the world would have ended up this way with or without you it just it just would have happened you know so uh, things that spawn from new industries and stuff uh were taken from older industries you know what i mean uh for example it, it was only a matter of time before we have toolkits and stuff right now we have toolkits all over the place you know coil master makes them and coil master wasn't even one of the first companies to make a toolkit but when you think about like you know fishing and tackle boxes and you know just just other things with like toolboxes and uh, whatever it just makes sense that vaping would have vape specific tools and some kind of a carrying case so now there's like you know a lot of vape bags vape pouches um you, you know different things like the uh, the gorilla straps and stuff right it just makes sense that it would go in this direction so with that said for me what i wanted to do is something you know truly innovative and just create some products right from you know uh the uh, the vision of of, of of a vapor because there were so many products out there i feel as if like you know were was created by people who don't exactly vape right and they don't they don't end up very good you know there's always something missing or something that seriously needs to be tweaked or you, you know you, you could just you could just kind of sense it right while things that were created by vapors you know um the uh, things that uh involved certain reviewers and stuff um you, you guys know my good friend uh from uh, twisted messes i mean you know his uh product did very well you know and when i asked them why did you do what you do you know what I mean? Why did you make this thing? He said at the time, right, is just that like a lot of atomizers out there wasn't fitting like all the interesting builds that he was making. So he just wanted to make an atomizer that fits his build, uh, builds, you know. And even though, you know, the Twisted Messes RDA is for a, you know, subgenre of vaping, right, because not everybody vapes, you know, huge clouds and stuff like that. It still did very, very well, you know what I mean? And, you know, the passion, the drive that made a product like that happen, right? Right? It wasn't about like, you know, success or money or, or, or whatever. That is just like, you know, the product of things. That, that's just the end result of things, okay? It is the idea that like, you know, uh, the product was designed by a vapor, you know what I mean? And that was the end of result uh, that was the end result of things there was more heart put into it there was more you know true real world experience put into it rather than like a couple of engineers just like you know taking shots in the dark and that's exactly what fog work stands for you know uh, we want to go ahead and put a lot of thought into the quality and detail uh, of exactly what vapors needs are right for each specific product that we release so you know if a product is geared towards its simplicity then it's going to have you know a lot of thought into how can we keep things very simple and, and easy go if it's supposed to be meant for huge clouds or whatever then what can we do to maximize wicking maximize clouds you know it's it's going to be geared towards that way and that's exactly the company that i wanted to start you know so uh without further ado let's talk about our debut item the fogwork slider okay so let's come over to the dive cam and let me show you what's going on so what we have here on the dive cam is the uh fogwork slider beta version okay now uh why is this version this version and you know there will be a final version so what i'm going to do is show you a copy of what pretty much the final version is okay i have the final version samples but not the uh but 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 it's not in mass production just yet but this is the final version samples so you can see the uh the packaging over here okay uh, a lot more thought a lot more upgraded and the difference is this uh these were painted with uh you know silver and gun metal okay the actual finished version all right i just want to give you a little sneak peek over here is that is going to be actual gunmetal and actual you know polished stainless okay so um you know it's good it's, it's going to match the uh, stainless tank and it's going to match the gunmetal tank so let me set this aside over here and talk about these guys a little bit okay so 
originally what happened was that when you deal with a company, right, uh, you're going to get a couple of uh, mock-up samples and stuff like that, right, which is, you know, you give them your basic idea and then they work with it and then, uh, you know, they give you the confirmed sample and then you just go ahead and then, you, you know, you tell them the changes that you need to be done. But then what happened was that, like, every single time they did a change for us, they would also deviate on something. And we felt as if that was very unfair because you're only allowed a certain am amount of... Uh, revisions before uh, let's say you, you know you have to pay more money for revisions because you can't just keep revising forever right because every single time you revise it's going to cost money however if every single time I tell you that like you know I, I just want to change a certain part about it right you change this but then you change something else that I didn't ask for that's kind of unfair and a waste of our revision you know so what ended up happening was uh, on the on the slider over here, okay, um, I'm going to open up one like so, okay, and then I'm going to show you a couple of beta samples and stuff like that and the thoughts uh, and, and stuff of, of the creation, okay. Um, here is the beta one, okay. Now, there are things that are like, you know, Mach 1 and Mach 2 and whatever that, 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 e that, that even like, you know, precedes uh, th this version, okay. Uh, I'm going to show you this one. See, this one, it doesn't even have any markings on it. This was like one of the first uh, samples, right? And you can see that it's even in tinted glass. So, well, what ended up happening? Um, tinted glass is no good. Something about the tinted glass, right? I, I can't do it right now, but I'm able to scratch it off. So what happened is that like the company was painting you, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of sort of like window tint paint or whatever. And that's a no, no, no way. You know, we're not going to release something like that. Uh, definitely, you know, clean, pure Pyrex glass only. If you're able to blue it into the glass, if you're able to tint the gla uh, tint it into the glass, then, you know, th this is considerable, right? And then we'll have to run, you know, some some temperature tests and stuff like that. So that, you know, th there's no chemicals that, that comes out of the tank. But if it's something like this, that, you know, when you scratch or whatever, it's going to come off with your fingers uh definitely you know we decided to dump that so that's why the uh fogwork slider original its original design was to give you guys a a tinted tank and a clear tank of your choosing you know uh but then what ended up happening is that like you know it's it's color was no good so we, we decided to scratch that um some people will go ahead and um per per perhaps criticize the fact that like you know it would have been better to have the uh screws come in from the sides instead of have it come down from the top uh we uh, totally agree okay it would have been better to do something like this. However, what I'm showing you in the camera over here, right? You can see exactly the flaw in this design. What happens is, is that when you do a, a, a setup like this, okay, it's going to be able to trap a particular type of coil and then that's it. Let's say uh, we wanted to, you know, just for the sake of uh, being completely universal, right? Um, and you wanted to run, say, like, you know, a nickel coil in uh, 30 gauge. I mean, granted, you know, not many people do that anymore, but let's say you did, okay? You could see that from over here when the screw uh, penetrates this post over here and gets to the other side, uh, there's a big gap underneath. And if you have thinner wires or whatever, it's very possible for it to get trapped right there, okay? So it's kind of holding, it's not really kind of holding or whatever, it's, it's not great. You know, now you might argue the fact that like, okay, well, you know, why don't you just like, you know, give it a little more meat over here and don't, don't drill it down so low, right? It's very difficult to CNC something like that because what happens is that, you know, when the drill comes in later on, it, it, it's, it's, it, it needs to, uh, it needs free space in order to work. You see what I'm saying? So to get rid of this gap is very difficult to come in from the side. Okay. Furthermore. Uh, what happens is that like if you try to install a coil per se, right? Like um, let me try to get a coil in my hand. Now I have a coil in my hand like so. And if we place it on top of this, you can see that um, the coil over here, it runs flat from a vertical angle. 
you know, from this perspective. But then uh, when, when it needs to be clamped down, it would be optimal if it was clamped down this way. So then what happens is that like, you know, the orientation of the coil to the airflow needs to be in this direction, but then the orientation of the leg needs to be in this direction. We find this very disruptive to the build. You know, uh, you guys might have this, um, uh, the, the, the exact same experience with like velocity posts and stuff when you're trying to put the coils in, but then, you know, the legs need to be this way while the coil needs to be this way. I think you understand what I'm trying to say. So instead we had to stick with this method instead okay the screws need to come up from the top all the way down to the bottom because this is the only way you could trap any diameter any shape any type of coil and it's not going to have a problem okay and this is very important to us because this is uh running a single coil and we know that a lot of single coil uh customers are going to be attempting to use this thing in temperature control and without a ridiculously ridiculously solid connection okay uh, we you know not involving plates not involving like anything it's just got to be bare naked solid connection and we felt as if this was the uh, best method of going about doing so okay and uh, yeah you will find that like if you attempt to do some kind of temperature control with this device it's going to make great connection so the next thing is that we want to talk about the airflow system over here. The airflow system is just simple and oval like this, okay? We did also have attempted mock-ups where we drilled holes over here from the side so that like we could get more air coming in from the side and the bottom and uh, probably, you know, make a more flavorful coil. It would be, you know, more of a lung hit, et cetera, et cetera, things like that, right? But then what ended up happening was that it would dry out the coil way too fast. The What's important about building an atomizer, in our opinion, is that the wicking and the airflow and the heat are all balanced together, so they all keep up with each other. You know, the uh, airflow cannot, um, you know, surpass what the wicking can do. That way, every single time you take a hit, your hit, your the the the, the vape that comes out stays juicy. You see what I'm saying? As opposed to, you know, way too much air uh, hits the, the wick and, and along with the heat that's provided, it's going to just, you know, dry things out very quickly. So it'll taste good at first, but then what happens is that like, you know, it gets it gets a little burnt. It gets a little bit dry, like right away. And uh, that's not the experience that we want our customers to have. The design of this little guy, okay? Uh, the best way that we could describe it is possibly uh, the idea of a K-Fun. First, the whole point is to take the uh, best possible parts and uh, put, put them together and make a great tank, okay? So let me clear everything here and uh, start over a bit. Uh, this Fogworks tank that I have in my hand is a little bit different from the one that uh, some of you guys who participated in the uh, uh, betas, uh, it's, it's a little bit different, okay? Because this is a sample of the final release version, okay? And the uh, in the final release version, um, first let me talk about its uh, idea and construction, okay? The airflow system over here is reminiscent of exactly what a sub tank is okay very simple cycloptic system from the bottom and then it runs air directly underneath the coil up the chimney to produce you know the best flavor uh vapor etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you saw that we intentionally opened the uh, uh the airflow underneath of the coil as the shape of an oval to match exactly the shape of the coil so that you know there's no flavor loss the next thing would be the drip tip, okay? Uh, not gonna lie, right? This is the Etsua Rage Tank uh, drip tip, okay? It, it, it comes from pretty much their design. The, uh, w I believe we did a, a few small changes to it, okay? But I remember that like when the Etsua Rage Tank came out, it was all the rage. Why? Because it was a three-in-one tank and everybody was, you know, uh, jiving about it and uh, it, it did a lot of things. However, what ended up happening with the reviews was that, like, the rage tank happened to be a jack-of-all-trades but kind of sort of a king of none. But the drip tip had rave reviews, you know. Everybody kept the drip tip of the rage tank. So you can see over here from the contour of, of things, it's a very, very comfortable drip tip. 
okay? Um, kind of looks like a rim without a tire, so to speak, right? But uh, what I want to show you guys here is how the Delrin is set up, right? So we have it from the bottom all the way to the base uh, over here so that like when you put this back onto the atomizer, it never actually touches the atomizer. So there's no heat. You know, uh, heat dissipation is very, very big in our book. Again, you know, big attention to detail and stuff in the creation of our devices. So the next thing that I want to show you guys is the drip tip over here. So let me go ahead and get like a standard drip tip from like, you know, an Inokin device or something like this. Okay. And um, I just want to show you guys the bore of stuff. See that? This is a much smaller bore over here, right? Yet, at the end of the day, right, the uh, the 510, the width is exactly the same thing. So, you know, should you decide to use your own drip tips, they absolutely fit, okay? But we do recommend that you give ours a try before you go ahead and uh, uh, use your own because I did put a lot of, you know, heart and effort into the design of the drip tip uh, from, you know, looking around the market and seeing that, like, this is definitely the way to go. Okay, so lastly, let's talk about the uh, the wicking and the uh, the engine inside. The 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 what where, what is this inspired from? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it's exactly what you guys probably speculated to be. It's gonna be from the original K fund. So why is it what it is? Because the K fund just works. You know what I mean? It, it it was a design that, in my opinion, was pretty much the wheel. And if it's not broke, let's not fix it. Correct? So. As you can see over here, the 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 uh, the chimney. Let me break this down a little bit because this is being held on to this as so. Okay, and let me put this chimney cap back on, and then you guys can see for yourself. Uh, this design is pretty much just this design, except this one, you know, big bore on steroids, right? So I'm gonna open this one up for you guys. So, uh, in comparison of the uh, the build deck and the K fun okay we can see that the uh, the juice channels are very similar to each other you see that it, it opens up like so so you know in the old days uh, we didn't vape that hard and pretty much kept uh, everything above one ohm so here's the juice channel over here that's opened up like so uh, it wasn't until later on where we started developing stuff where you know we had the uh, the cotton sitting inside of the juice channel over here so that's what uh, explains the big bore system okay and then from here it was just a very simplistic design of like you know the chimney however um, rather than what the K fund did where it was you know separated into like so many pieces over here right so you had the chimney and you had a chimney cap and then this and then this all put together right uh, we decided to go ahead with a even more simplistic design of just the uh, the glass tube and then the uh, top portion of it so you have the lower body the top body uh, I don't really consider the drip tip as a piece of the t as a piece of the tank you know uh, so so this is more pretty much of a three-piece design because the drip tip is usually you know just always permanently connected to it okay um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is a couple of uh, upgrades with the final version of the Fogworks tank. So if you check out our O-rings over here, uh, this was mentioned that there is an upgrade in the gasket. They're not O-rings, okay? They're, they're just uh, upgraded gasket. I, I'm not too sure exactly how to explain this, but, you know, it sits in place and then it, it, could, it could hold itself with pressure. See that? Okay. Um, the same thing for the other side. Now, originally, okay, when we designed this tank, um, there was a lot of people who explained, uh, who, who said to us that they really loved the elegance of having, uh, you know, a full glass, just full glass with the tank, right? But then we did get a couple of, uh, you know, con uh, concerns about like, well, um, I can't drain the tank and then still work on my build, right because uh, if, if I do then I'm going to lose the juice over here so I need to drain the tank first and then uh, I could I could I could access the build right um, now the only fix to that back then right is to look at something like this this is the Alaria tank system right now this was uh, the same idea this is what we wanted to do just full glass all the way it's just the aesthetics of it was is so much nicer however in order to access your build, 
while not losing any juice so that like you know you could take it a, 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 in half is to uh, put a metal frame body on the glass over here so then you're gonna have this and this is going to be back and forth argued some people are going to say well you know more stability on this thing some people are going to say yeah but i don't like the way it looks and you know there's going to be issues on that but uh hands down you know unanimously people seem to agree that like you know the the full glass uh seems to uh you know look a little bit better you know, people either you know don't really care or they choose the glass that's that's usually the consensus that we're getting so uh we try to uh meet everybody halfway let's 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 do something the, to fix that so if you look at the gasket over here this one can do the exact same thing so now you kind of have best of both worlds you will be able to you know um with some pressure okay and then be careful it will still hold your juice so you will be able to flip this upside down and then release your build from one side while pinching over here right so you pinch the glass and the uh, the top portion and then you re from tightening it you release the bottom and then very carefully set this aside and then work on your build and then put it back just so, just in case you know you 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 still have half a tank left. Coming back to the deck over here, uh, not too much uh, uh, changes or anything like that. But you, if if you in comparison, uh, the posts over here is just ever so slightly bigger, just slightly bigger. Uh, we disagree with um, going any bigger than this because running a single coil, this is going to be able to support uh, twenty four core. Claptons. This is going to be able to support, you know, your alien coils and stuff like that. You know, we do want the tank to be able to support our coils, but we disagree with anything bigger or, or than, than than this. You know, like like super transformer coils or you know twisted on top of twisted coils and, and things like that. You know, th that that's something that probably shouldn't go in the tank because those are uh, pretty inefficient coils in our opinion, anyways. So yeah, uh, generally your fuse Claptons, your your round builds your uh the, you know stainless steel builds and stuff any kind of round builds alien claptons and stuff this is going to be able to support it and support it very very well uh again as we said you know we continue to go with the uh top to down grub screw method because it is the most solid and universal connection in our opinion all right guys so here here we back are at the top cam again i like to thank everybody who participated in the uh, uh beta release of this stuff so what ended up happening to um the uh the rest of these slider tanks that that, that came from the uh, the beta collection over here well uh the company <laughs> that we originally worked with we ended up you know just not engaging with them anymore uh, uh we no longer work with this particular company and then they decided to uh, dump a couple of it at GearBest and then uh, handed it out to a couple of uh, uh, reviewers uh, most mostly Southeast Asia uh, I believe own oh boy Josh did a review on it as well I'm um, sorry to say that like that wasn't the final intention of our product you know uh, but uh, Josh and all my other friends, if you guys are watching, I will be releasing this item, the uh, the final copy with the upgraded, um, you know, uh, O-rings and everything like that to you guys very shortly, okay? Uh, so those of you who decide to stay on my thoughts of how to build this thing, here we go. All right, guys, so we're over at the screen cap over here. And um, if you go over to fogworksusa.com, okay, uh, at the bottom right, I already did a video uh, a while back uh, trying to explain exactly my thoughts on uh, not not really explain my thoughts on the, but basically a uh, um an, an info uh video you know so anybody who picks up this item you have the support of this video immediately so i'm just going to click play right here and i'm going to keep this muted and uh we're just going to go skip over real quick and to get over to this portion right now um here i just talk about you know like get your hotspots worked out first okay so once you have everything over here worked out and uh you know it's 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 firing from the center in and out and there's no hot spots or anything like that okay you want to you know clip your leads and stuff and if you guys notice the uh posts of these leads they are at, at an obtuse angle right uh that is also you, you know uh, 
something that was done intentionally so that you could really get in there with your flush cutters and uh, cut, you, you know, get, get a close shave as possible. So um, moving on over here, we're going to be talking about exactly the wicking method, right? So you can see that we put some cotton through this, but we didn't choke the coil, okay? So it's very important that, like, you know, you don't put a ton of cotton in there. So those of you who are using cogendo strips and stuff like that, you know, just cut something along the width of the uh, the coil so it's it's very squarey you know what I mean don't 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 go any further than that so um, I'm, I'm really sorry for all the pauses and stuff but here is something that uh, is is very uh, important that I want you guys to notice okay is that we cut the wicks to the length of the threads and no further than that okay why very simple because uh, shorter wicks wick better okay <laughs> then what you do is that you know you put your glass and your chimney back on so after you put your glass and your chimney back on okay uh after you fill the tank looking at the uh juice wells from the side right what, what the uh af looking at the juice channels from the side okay you should not be able to see the wicks at all Okay, that is very, very important. You should not be able to see the wicks at all for a couple of reasons. Number one, you'll be able to get more juice in there, you know, just two drops on both sides. And number two, you know, the juice can get in there so it could be, uh, you know, drawn upwards by the, uh, the shorter cotton wick that you have inside. So... A uh, couple of things, right? Uh, when you are working out the hot spots, especially with uh, stainless steel coils and stuff, you don't want to put too much heat, okay? Try to uh, adjust your box mount down to, say, something around, like, you know, 20, 25 watts or whatever. You just want it to be able to glow a little bit, okay? You're not looking for, you know, like, huge <laughs> like heat or anything like that. And uh, before you put in your cotton, uh, give it a little bit of juice and uh, uh, fire it up a little bit, okay? So that kind of, like, purges your coil a little bit, keeps it uh, nice and clean. Then put on your cotton and then keep the wicks as short as possible. So, guys, thank you so much for watching my explanation and creation video. I love all you guys who supported me this far. And to see this product take off, uh, hopefully it will be very successful and it will be you know thanks to all of you guys out there who've uh, helped me throughout all these years you know so uh, as always guys we say here on PVA question everything do your homework and they've clever my friends love you all take care